I'm doing well. How are y'all? We're doing all right. Great. Um, I think that looks good. Must be. I think this is all of our first times on Zoom. Or yeah. Ours at least. <laughs> oh, Dave, um, don't tell me I picked the wrong application. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. We should know by now. We we should be uh, Zoom experts, and and I'm not. <laughs> um, Enough. But yeah, it's nice to meet you, Jaden. If I mean, maybe I've met you in passing before, but um, it's good to see your face and finally get this um, podcast going. I've been excited about this. Yeah, I've been really excited too to have y'all on. Uh, yeah, because I saw you y'all a couple of times back when I lived in Athens before COVID. So you always put on a good show. So thank you. Where do you live now? Uh, I live in Southwest Georgia now, Albany. I don't know Wait. if you don't know where that is. <laughs> I don't know where it is, but I'm familiar with, you know, that area. But that's cool. Are, are y'all in y'all's practice space? The wood paneling is really well, cool. We're in our practice space. Um, you might can hear, like, the metal heads practicing their metal music right now. It's pretty, it's an interesting place. It's like this like old warehouse and i feel like it used to be a i don't know a bank or something a, i think it was a pants printing factory i feel like i we found that when we were snooping through the yeah. area that we're not supposed to be in um but yeah it's pretty cool it is you can practice as late as you want to um so there's a lot of perks to being here that's good. Little, little, little local history transition. Um, so what band's playing next door? Gosh, I don't know. It's just, I feel like this band has been there for like 30 years or maybe even before Christ. Like, <laughs> I feel like they've always just been in that room going, duh, 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 and it's, it's always like the same riff too. It's pretty constant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's just a bunch of like 30 or 40 somethings blowing off steam after work you know <laughs> just being super super loud i feel like they're dentists stuff they can't do in their garage <laughs> yeah that their wives wouldn't let them do or something yeah. like that <laughs> whatever it takes it's fun. they're really nice yeah they are and they all drive like minivans with yeah or subarus or subarus with school stickers on the back <laughs> all metalheads are sweethearts i guess yeah Really? Well, I guess to jump into it, I'd like to have the artists that have on introduce themselves. You know, what's your name, your pronouns, what do you play, that sort of thing. All right. Go first. My name's Joey. I can't figure out this camera reverse thing. <laughs> uh, my name's Joey, and I'm the drum. Oh, hey, there you go. This meeting is recorded. Hi. Sorry about that. Yes, like I said, I'm in Southwest Georgia, very rural. Sometimes the internet goes out. Thankfully, it comes back on oh, really no. quickly at my school. <laughs> so That's that may happen so a couple times, depending how long this goes. Hopefully, it won't happen again, but who knows? <laughs> um, no, that's totally fine. We're in a warehouse, so my experience is the same thing on our end. Um, but yes, I believe it was Rowan's turn. I'm Rowan. I play bass. My pronouns are he, him. All right. And I think it cut out like toward the end of Joey. So we go over years again, Sienna. Um, my name is Sienna Chandler. I play guitar, she, her. <laughs> so how would you describe your music? What did, what did the guy, what did the American Pink Kid guy oh, say? Oh, art rock. Art rock. <laughs> <laughs> what does that term mean to you? <laughs> Oh he came up with another funny one. He did. Vogue rock. Yeah, Vogue rock. We're, 
I don't we're trying to just like everyone we're just trying to make our own genre type of thing making whatever sounds best to us that's you definitely know? I like it whenever I just ask something random so like the first I think the first person I interviewed said like music to punch your friends to I had someone say like funeral dirge music so like, yeah. every, everything's acceptable we're gonna trademark the Vogue rock one <laughs> rock that you would listen to while reading Vogue magazine <laughs> I think it has like an element of theatrics to it. I mean, at least in the live show and in the recordings, they can get a little like uh, thespian ish. Uh, and it's, you know, it's just a little bit over the top, but I think it fits nicely in an indie category. You know, if you're trying to like fill out the very minimal spaces that Spotify gives you to categorize yourself is so that, but. Yeah, I think we, we lean into the art rock thing a little bit. So you have a new album coming out soon. So do you have a release date for that? Yes, it's February 18th. Very exciting. Very soon. So it seems to have like a pretty different sound based on the singles that you released so far from your first album. Would you agree with that? Uh, 100%. So what's kind of driven that change in sound in terms of I want how you made it? I think it just happened a little bit naturally. I was 16 when I wrote a lot of the songs on Ride Rolla. I didn't know how to write a song yet. I didn't really know how to play guitar or sing. Um, and so I just kind of did, I wasn't really expecting to make a record the first time around. And then we did. And so like my little 16 year old songs w were on it. And now I'm you know, 10 years later, over the course of playing guitar and singing and playing shows, you just naturally get better and your, and your craft and your art becomes more uh, cohesive. And you can kind of, you, like for me at least, I can hear an idea that I like or a, a, a way that I want to represent the music and then kind of latch onto that better than I would have been able to when I was a teenager. So. Yes, it just happened very involuntary, involuntary, voluntarily. Can't say that word. <laughs> Wasn't Joey on the last album as well? He sure was. Yeah. How have you evolved in that time period? Same, same sort of thing. We were, we were both teenagers at the time. And I feel like both of us have improved musically and just as far as what we think, like a finished song should be you know at the time doing ride a roll a lot of those songs were just as they came out like you practice it at band practice and be like yep that's good done. done don't change a thing we're now it's it's a lot more we're putting everything under the microscope and being a lot more diligent about do we really need three choruses could we do with just two or does the song need to be seven minutes long? Can it just be three minutes long? A lot of those kind of improvements to just the songwriting and the playing, of course, not going as fast. That's the biggest thing is we've, we've slowed down the tempo a lot, probably for our own sake, because we're not like wired up teenagers anymore, you know? There's a total art to like learning how to edit yourself too. Like we didn't know about like self revision. And so, yeah, like you were saying we just made these songs and then we're like okay let's go record them now but with ghost party we took like a year two years just editing and adding little sparkles and stuff and what about you rowan what, what have you brought to the table for it i'm really excited to play the songs that they've written because while while i do i i take the live performances as, as a way to play them maybe a little differently, but try to channel the energy that they captured on the recording. And while, while those recordings have gone through a lot of changes, I think I think the general energy has stayed the same. And um, being sort of a new addition, I'm, it's my first experience coming into a band where songs are already written and I've really enjoyed it so far. We've enjoyed you. Thanks, Rowan. Awesome. Oh, thanks, thanks Rowan. So what's, what are y'all's tour plans for the album? Our, oh, like after the album releases? Mm -hmm. um, I am like just tireless, tirelessly trying to 
book shows for us because we don't have a booking agent we don't have a label and so I'm just sort of like faking my way through that and I'm doing an okay job at it I mean of course I would love those things but I've been able to book us some some pretty decent shows and um at, right now we're looking at going up north in July surprise we got a Philadelphia show today that's exciting um so yeah that's kind of the 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 route that we're taking and then through that just you know meet people and and try and just meet other bands to play with around the U.S. that's sort of my goal right now and then of course you know on the off times make new songs make new music videos it's been really interesting going across all these cities the past couple months and the cities in the next coming months and meeting all these people and sort of getting an idea of what all these different scenes across the U.S. feel like and look like and sound like um, by playing with them. And that's just been a really interesting part of tour that I hope continues. Yeah. Agreed. What's it been like playing since COVID? It's been very different. Uh, a lot of places require proof of vaccination to get in, which is, it's nice because you know that even though it's like kind of a big crowd sometimes, you know it's a fairly safe occasion. However, that can also mean you have five people there instead of where there would have been 50. So it's it's got its ups and its downs, but it's it, it's different. It's not bad, it's not good, but it's different, you know? We have had good shows, and I wonder if people have been so cooped up that like a bunch of people come. So that's maybe one of the highs. But yeah, you've got to require a lot of things. The good thing stuff. is that people have been cooped up for a while and, and want to see live music, which is, it's great when the people that are at your show want to be there. And obviously that's not a universal constant of everybody loving what they're seeing, but we like that our audiences have felt just a little bit more engaged as of recent. Yeah. I'll take it they're responding well to the new material. Yeah. Yeah. There were some people singing our uh, Don't Move, which is one of our newer singles. So that was cool. That was, I love getting to see that. It's always kind of like beside myself when that happens. I'm like, what? How? <laughs> yeah, you've gotten a lot of praise from like different publications and whatnot for the Don't Move song. So how's that felt? awesome yeah that's our first official single since i mean ever we never released a single because we didn't know how to do it last time and we just came out with riderola so this time around we've been like doing the whole album campaign and yes don't move has received a lot of great attention and it's felt it's felt really nice like we got we were in Under the Radar today, which is a fantastic publication. And I don't know, we were next to some cool names. And it just, it, it feels like you're getting legitimized as a band. So that feels great. So are all of you from Athens? Me and Rowan are. Sienna's got a longer backstory. <laughs> I'm from California, but I moved here when I was seven. So. I'm basically from Athens, but I still remember the coast, baby. What, what's it, what was it like, I guess, growing up in the Athens scene? Because it's one of those scenes that gets a lot of attention for, you know, it being having its place in the indie world or whatever because of REM or whoever. But, like, I feel like living, there's a lot, so much more to Athens than just, like, a couple of big names. So what was it like, like, growing up around the, I guess, story? that surrounds it, or just the local scene in general? I think you're kind of, like, from a young age, kind of, you see that there are these bands and there is this history, but there's also so much more going on currently and presently that can sometimes be more interesting, definitely sometimes be less interesting than those, like, historical landmark bands. I think Athens right now is at a point of, a lot of bands kind of converging on some of their best material and just kind of like hitting strides, like be that touring or releasing things. But growing up, there's there's a lot of really great musical resources in Athens that we've all, we've all kind of used. 
over, over the years. Yeah, I feel like I was sort of led into this wonderful music town, you know, for my, my dad being in a band and just growing up in and around culture and art, there was a fantastic program called Camp Amp that we all did that really even further led us into the music world. And it teaches you how to do things like book your own shows and wrap a cable and, and things that you don't get taught in your ordinary music coaching school or, you know, and it teaches like life lessons in the music industry. And it's, that's a really cool program. And, you know, it, it helps you kind of network when you're 15 with other kids. Because then, then a couple of years down the line, you'll be thinking, man, I have this really cool project and these really cool ideas. Do I know any drummers? And then you do from camp a couple of years ago mm -hmm. or something like that. And um, that's that's been a really great resource to have. Is that how um, they knew to get you in the band, Rowan? Kind of, not kind of. He was, I think we went to see a finale maybe and saw him playing and we're like, oh, that's a good basis. He was at the, he was our intern though. Oh yeah, that was the, the main, the tipping point certainly was. I was, I was assistant engineer at a recording studio that I work at now. That's, that's where some of the album was recorded. So I, I was around for some of the initial tracking days. I think every, eventually everything just fell into place, just like I planned. <laughs> <laughs> so sinister. He's the real. He's the ghost. The album's normally named after. Yeah, one hundred percent. You guys are, have been around for a while now. I think your first album came out like seven years ago. So I feel like the lifespan of an Athens band is kind of short, relatively. So it's like you went from a new band on the block to being almost like an elder band. How's that like feel in the scene? It's funny because I still feel like we're a young band <laughs> because we started when we were so young when we were like 15 and now we're at the age where you know other kids are graduating college and they're like I'm gonna try out the music thing so like everybody in the music scene is like our peers but yes we have been a band for 10 years just because we we started so early and at this point I, f I finally feel like I, I know how to know how to do it and I know how to tour and and do all these extra things that I didn't know how to do before. Whereas when I was younger, I was just like, kind of just going and moving within whichever direction I, I would get pulled. I think that answers your question. So, but, but yes, I mean, with being a, a 10 year old band in Athens, regardless of our age, it's like, you know, you, you see new trends come and go. And, you, and now I'm like, oh, I remember that really cool band where, I, that just saying that makes me feel like I've been in the game for a second. Like, oh, I miss. I remember when music used to be better. <laughs> I feel like a just jilted old man now, but it's cool. Yeah, you you just see like a lot of bands coming in and out of existence, and that's both bittersweet and it's also really interesting to see like what the new trends are and what music is doing and you know, yeah. What trends have y'all seen over the years? punk was really huge like in 2000 the early 2010s to 15 like punk was the genre like aggressive but it was also catchy I mean there was like a pop element to it and just I don't know everyone was so like hardcore at least in this town at least in that time frame that's what our like DIY movement was and now it's um, master guitars yeah, yeah. it's like and it. i'm not saying it's bad i love it it's just different it's like very like snowflakey <laughs> <laughs> i mean and there's fantastic bands that i i love and believe in but it's yeah it's it's, it's way different softer and it, it's maybe more approachable than the <laughs> shit yeah. that was happening a couple years ago similar to this band that's playing through our air vents <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i found that very interesting because like like i was in athens i guess from like it was like 2019 to 2020 and so like i definitely 
I mean, I knew, was, I knew a couple punk bands, but not very many. So that's interesting to hear that that used to predominate so much. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had these crazy shows called uh, Punk Fest. It was huge. And like, I don't know, like 300 people would come to this little tiny beat up venue. And I mean, it was like, oh, are you going to Punk Fest? It was the talk of the town. Mm-hmm. No longer. Did you go? <laughs> Yeah, I did. Oh, I had a great time. I I was in the mosh pit and I felt very cool. But I don't know. Now I now I that would hurt me. Uh, what do you think has driven that change so much? To, I mean, I mean, that's a, I mean, to have such a hard shift in like the overall sound of the scene. I don't know. It was the scene that CN is referencing. The big punk scene was everyone knew everyone and they were all friends and they all went to the same party and once all of them kind of grew up simultaneously when those bands started shutting down it shut down like a big big scene all at the same time you know i feel like there was maybe within the span of a year all of those guys like got jobs or moved or got married or had a kid or something and we went from having like six really good bands that were playing all the time to none and so it left a lot of open spots that have been slowly getting filled yeah, there wasn't even bands for a second yeah i think something else that's kind of driven to change in just styles that are filled is sort of the changes in how popular music and the sort of comeback of rock as a genre in like i don't know like radio circulation especially what's playing on like university stations here i mean it's going to influence what bands come come from either kids coming through the university or just people living in town yeah i guess just a, a change in what's popular musically there are some newer music videos that sienna you've done the whole like directing and all that for it right editing and everything yes i have yeah, so I, mean, I think they're really like well produced and all. I think they're really good. And so like, especially about the Don't Move video, there seems to be, there's a lot going on visually throughout it. And so, I mean, I, I watched an interview you did, I don't know when it was, but apparently it's based on an old video game called like Fatal Frame. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it totally is. The song is as well. It's, it's based on a couple things, but yeah, Fatal Frame. And then I had heard of, scary story when I was 10 or 11 and this guy was like walking through a house and he was really into urban xing and he had gone onto this property that he wasn't supposed to he didn't have his flashlight there was just all kinds of shit falling out of his pockets like he couldn't find any source of light except for his camera so he was going through the house and like taking a bunch of pictures so that he could see his way out but the whole time like he's kind of rushing out of this abandoned house and he said he swears that something was following him something was like he could feel on his neck like something on him and that story always fascinated me just like this person trying for their life to get out of this house and the only light they have is from a camera and he said the next something really mysterious happened I can't remember exactly what but he he had that camera with him and he had the film role he was going to go develop the film to see what he got and then he like left it in a very specific place and the next day he came back to it it was like shattered and torn it's like to pieces he didn't have a dog or anything but yeah he was like it's like something in the house didn't want me to see the the photos on that picture so I always I had always wanted to do something creatively with that thought because it never really left me um and that's a little bit of the don't move video she's going around with this camera and she's taking pictures and and finds that people in the pictures are not what they appear to be in real life and then everyone turns into monsters <laughs> so yes and i'm a big i, I really like ps2 games too so fatal frame fits into that i don't know did you play did you play that game no i haven't admittedly but i think it's a cool story <laughs> so like is the people turning into monsters and whatnot is that just like a basically a cool plot device or is there like some type of deeper meaning for that as well in terms of this video, it's 
it's pretty surface level. It's just like, imagine a haunted camera takes pictures and once you get your picture taken, you've kind of become infected with this, this morphing disease where you turn into like this ugly gruesome thing. And then um, the only person that doesn't get his picture taken is Rowan and Rowan is like, survives the thing. He survives the video, but he all, also ends up into this other dimension. And then I follow him in there. That's the end. <laughs> That's the end. No, there's no deep meaning. It's just like a bunch of madness. This has been a creepy. Um, yeah, I, I definitely thought the, the final shot was interesting. It sounds like the Stonehenge of like broken doors. Yeah. And it just makes me wonder, like, what's the reason behind like y'all's proclivity for like broken doors? I remember like a Halloween show, y'all like did like the red rum thing where you broke a door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just made me think about that when I saw the end of the music video. <laughs> we, yeah, we have bought we, and destroyed uh, four doors. I think five, maybe even. I feel like there's another one we're forgetting. We've got a lot of broken doors. We had door experience with The Shining that both are t uh, completely separate things. But yes, we we did um, The Shining for a Halloween show, and then we were like, oh, we have experience with doors and. This would look cool in the video, and she flies into another dimension with Rowan. So, like, maybe that's the door. And that was <laughs> we're we're sort of going for, uh, you know how in Nightmare Before Christmas, there's the scene where he's in like purgatory, and he chooses to go to the Christmas one, but they show like, oh well, that's the Fourth of July one, and there's the Easter one. There's all these other doors that you never get to go through. So the whole it was kind of based on that sort of feeling of, well, we came through the pink door, but what are these other two doors? They've never been pictured before and where do they go and what's their story? Just to kind of leave a little, leave you wanting more type of feeling. Next music video. <laughs> Thanks. Don't you have one coming out, out on Friday? Yeah, we do. It's the video for Third Voice. It's. Um, which, okay, it actually premiered on Under the Radar, and I didn't know it, so I'm I'm just kind of promoting that it will happen on Friday. <laughs> but it's out, like, it's technically out. Yeah, and this one is about competing for the role of the star in the play. And it's me and Rowan again, and uh, I sabotage his role, and the rest you just have to watch. <laughs> so, yeah, that's Third Voice, my favorite single. My favorite song off Ghost Party. Yeah. Either of y'all have favorite songs off the album? Probably Third Voice, if I really had to choose. The, the previous single, though, Oh Brother, the one after Don't Move, that one's probably my favorite song, I guess. Third Voice is great, though. They're, I mean, I spent so much time with them. I feel like <laughs> Sienna would agree. We kind of love them all as our children. There's not really a... We didn't put a, a skip song on there. They all have had so much attention paid to them. So it's kind of hard to choose one, but. You have to save one song in the fire. Which one is it, Joey? Pro I know <laughs> probably Oh Brother. Pig Pen for me. That's my favorite to play live. Yeah. You'll just have to wait for the record. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's interesting the the way the next one's going to be about plays. Or that's kind of like the the motif is like Dark Colossus, which I guess isn't a single, but it was like kind of leading up to it. And it was like yeah. TVs in the background and don't move those photographs. And so now you're gonna have like a one about plays. And it's, I don't know, it seems to be like kind of like just going through that format. There's a very specific uh, themes in these videos. I'm very pointed, I'm a Scorpio, so. Yeah, <laughs> Ghost, oh my God, what's your sign? I'm a Virgo. I love Virgos. Oh wow. my God. Oh. That explains everything. Oh my God. <laughs> um, after all this time we've spent together. Yeah, we decided that Ghost Party kind of had like a household appliances theme as far as the record cover. I just, it reminds me of like I Spy, like just like a bunch of random crap that you would find in a house like washing machines and refrigerators makes me think of ghost party uh, this is completely random but it makes me think about um how like william s burroughs who's like an author or whatever he 
So I had to think we like jumble up words and we think this would be like the way you get new ideas is just to you know, jump them up and get whatever together. And of course, you may like super complicated with psychoanalysis or something, but it seems like you can do the same thing with household appliances. So you're doing like the object version of that <laughs> with yeah. your videos. Totally, 100%. We, uh, the initial record cover was in a refrigerator, but it was poster sized and it didn't look as good cropped. So sadly, we had to find another record cover, which is like, it's like a poster in the middle of the album booklet, though. <laughs> like flip it out. I think I think we're gonna do that because it's so cool. I love the refrigerator shot. I think we're gonna make it an insert for sure. What's your like general songwriting process like nowadays? Um, I do everything. I'm the. It's it's all me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. They do. They both do so much. I mean, I will sit down with, and write a song, and it will go through my shitty garage band process. I will do some production. I won't do all of the production because one of my favorite things to do is sit down with Joey and like kind of come up with harmonies together on the spot, which is both terrifying and very gratifying to to be under that kind of stress. Like sometimes I'll start yelling and I'll have to go take a walk because I can't, I get frustrated with my voice and my thought process. And then, and then we'll come in back and work on it together. And then I'll leave and he'll do his own. He'll add a bunch of stuff in terms of harmonies and drum stuff and bass lines. So yeah, I, I've kind of pre present like a skeleton and then he gives it blood and body, <laughs> like Jesus. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. The, the, your music is the, the true communion. Everything else is heresy. Yeah, yeah. it's basically a trinity. Yeah. I look at it very biblically. A lot of people like power trios, but they're not ready for our power trinity. <laughs> <laughs> is that what the apples were in the Don't Move video? <laughs> yes yeah. yes and then Rowan like live oh we would look so dumb without Rowan like he brings so much to our just like you were saying your bass lines and just your presence on stage describe your um, stage presence I guess I think it, it's it's pretty electric up there um, <laughs> that's that's a that's a way to put it for those listening joey rock it rock rockingly out uh nodded his head head banged as head the banged, kids say head bung I, um <laughs> yeah so we play with a lot of the harmonies and extra guitars as a backing track that kind of adds just this this like third dimension to what you're already hearing so a lot of it is trying to keep movement along with those parts because we, we are all playing we're, we're all playing instruments of course some of the parts can get pretty technical so it's like moving your fingers as fast as they can go and jumping around and having a good time while doing that sometimes my earplugs fall out same i watched an interview from years ago i think it was like right after adorola came out and sienna you said that you like adopt like a stage persona whenever you get on stage or something and then you were planning then you thought you would like change that at some point to like a new persona which i was just wondering does that hold up today where you still like feel like you're doing a persona on stage uh, um wow i wonder when i said that because i was so i'm just kidding um i i, I feel like maybe personas the Maybe I use like a the word that I knew how to say, but it's it's more of just like a I'm kind of like nervousy acting. I, I tend towards the anxious side, but I just kind of have to make myself like strong and I don't know. I just I have to be it or else I will completely fall apart having to play live. So yeah, I mean I I have adopted this thing and and whether it's I, I think the the skin of it can change. Like I think Ryder Rolla, I I would physically like dress very almost old school Hollywood at times, and I would 
make myself like a different character. But yeah, I think this go around, I'm, I'm sort of adopting like, I don't know, I've been wearing this Victorian dress, but purely because it's so comfy. They are pretty comfy. It's, yeah. I, am I, am I answering this right? I think so. I, I think we all kind of put on masks when we get on stage. Yeah. That, like, I don't want to speak for everyone, but, um, like, I'm not as energetic in everyday conversation as I am jumping around with the bass on my shoulder. <laughs> and I think that's a pretty universal thing. Yeah. I agree. What about you? Oh, I'm the exact same <laughs> on stage. <laughs> no changes. I can vouch for that. He never changes his demeanor. I mean, yeah, you you got to act he's a like rock. he is a rock. He's very Virgo acting. Even though he's a Libra. Can you believe that? Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's just this balance of like you've got to you have to be entertaining because you're entertaining a crowd and 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 it is genuine. But yeah, you can kind of glamorize it however you want to with Victorian dresses or wigs or whatever you want to do. Hooters crop tops. Hooters crop tops. <laughs> <laughs> the, the wig thing. Oh. You made like a YouTube skit a couple of years ago of like, oh. <laughs> where did that come from? I don't know. I just thought it'd be funny. She I was making the most nonsensical video that I could. You have this person that's just like really upset about they don't wear a wig. Like we've all met that person that just like gets so upset about something so stupid. And so that was like, okay, this is gonna be one of the videos. I miss making those. They were like, we would just make up the stupidest things. It was kind of like, like old school Tim and Eric. I loved that, that style of humor. So we need to. We need Season to two it. coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. For real. <laughs> yeah, we need, you need to promote that instead of Ghost Party. I need just the YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm just saying I enjoyed them. I guess they came out awkwardly. I'm so I'm so glad you did. Yeah, thank you. How far outside of Athens have y'all played before? I think it's different for all of us. Where is the first place you played? I'm I'm kind of terrible at judging distance. I don't know which is farther in which direction, but with Monsoon, I played with Na in Nashville and Asheville and someplace in Florida, but I'm not really sure how far each one goes in each direction. I'd say from, from my experience with the band, generally the Southeast, but I, I know that they've done a lot otherwise in the other years that they've been active. I think the farthest I've gone was New York. Yeah, it was really cool. And then, I mean, we did Austin, Texas too. Which one is farther? They might... Texas is a big state. It is a big state. But I don't know. I feel like in terms of just seeing somewhere I've never seen before, I'd never been to New York. And so to get to do that because of music I was playing and get to see the big city, it was very exciting. It was really, really cool. And then for Joey, I don't know where he's gone. Probably maybe Austin. Do you have a favorite place to play um, outside of Athens? Yeah, right now, like, honestly, South Carolina is, you wouldn't, think, I mean, South Carolina, the people there are so cool and excited about music, and I don't know what it is about that place, but we've been playing the radio room uh, a bit frequently, and that is a great venue, and the owner pays the bands so fairly, and so, he's just a cool guy, and the audience is receptive. Everybody up there is super supportive. Sometimes in towns where there's a lot of bands, you can get stuck with the front row of people or just like audiences feeling semi disinterested, but we don't, I haven't picked up on that vibe at all in many of these South Carolina shows because everybody seems so genuine and into the music on stage, which is something great to see. What about in town? Do y'all have a favorite venue to play? Yeah, our one of the best ones got uh, didn't survive COVID. It was called the Caledonia. That place was great. Never forget. Never forget. R.I.P. But other than that, the Forty Watt. I 
I love the Fordiwa. I love the management there. The staff is incredible. It's it feels like family whenever you're going in there. Like I love the Fordiwa. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, both are great venues. But so what's up with Caledonia? I've like heard rumors they're coming back or that like church bar is like they're using their back. name or something. I don't know. Like, I'm not like, in town, but I've just heard rumors or something. Church bar is using the space and um, nobody should support it. I'm not going to elaborate. Fair enough. So uh, I was reading y'all's bio on your website and it said, Sienna, you and Joey, you both like moved away from Athens for a bit. And then, then got, and the band was like on hiatus, and then they kind of got back together. So, was there any like conscious reason why you both came back specifically to Athens and not like go somewhere else to another reform, or was it just kind of like a, you know, simple decision? After, okay, I had, um, I think Joey left the band to go pursue other life things, and then I did the same not too long after him. You know, and we both kind of lifed for a minute. No bad. Lifed. Li- we lifed for a minute and just did, I don't know, like, I was in a romance and you were doing car stuff. I won't speak for you. But I, yeah, I had gone to Ohio to do recording school. And when I was there, it had been like a year since we talked or maybe even two years. And I was like, dang, you know what? I've never been as happy as I was playing with Joey. So I had like this plan of grandeur to come back to Athens and get the band back together. I'm going to get it back together. I was like 20. (laughs) um, The youngest person ever to say that. So yeah, we got back and like I kind of dragged my feet a little bit because I was nervous because we hadn't talked in a long time. And I finally like I think I saw him at Max Canada one night and I was like, okay, time to strike. (laughs) Because I'd been like progressively just like getting in this fantasy world more and more like, okay, we're going to make this awesome album and it's going to be great and everything's going to be fine. So I started writing Ghost Party like from going insane. (laughs) And then thank God you said yes. I don't know what I would have done. I would have like jumped off a cliff or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, it, it, uh, we both found our way back to each other and he was very willing to, you know, I think we just both landed in a, the right time at the right place. Like we had both been done lifing and we just came back at the perfect time to one another. Well said. Thank you. You can say some stuff too. All right. You got it. You hit the nail on the head. <laughs> cool. So in, in that interim, you did like some acting, Sienna? in a, apparently a film called Ragged Heart, which I admittedly have not seen or had heard of beforehand, but I will check out, try to at some point very soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, I found out about it today. That's why I have no information about it. <laughs> yeah, I did a lot of like, um, just side quests. What did, I, did I see something? I thought I saw a ghost. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I did like a lot of side quests and the time apart. Uh, one of them was acting in this movie called Ragged Heart. It was so cool. Uh, the director, Evan McNary, fantastic plot. But yeah, it, I mean, it was just an indie, small indie movie and he flew, he came from LA to come film it specifically in Athens because he wanted that camaraderie and the, and the special thing that Athens has. So he, he got a couple Athens musicians in it and, and he happened to ask me, he was like, do you act? And I said, not at all, but I'll be in your movie. And he said, okay, deal. And we did it. And it took like three or four years. And it, it finally uh, went to the big screen this past October. So me and Joey flew to go see it. We were so jet lagged. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's what rich people say when they, what? I'm butchering this joke. It's a, it's a bit. It's I'm a bit. Ruining this podcast. No, you're not. My- <laughs> Y'all are doing fantastic. I feel like I'm the awkward one. <laughs> but do you uh, do you have any plans to do further acting? I would love to. It was it was really cool. I guess I have to keep playing in this band so more people notice me and act, ask if I act. That's the plan. 
I, I learned how to do Premiere Pro and I was like, well, maybe I'll make a fake reel of me like acting in various situations and I'll just compile it and it will look like I've been in a lot of movies when really it's just like me in our studio, like wearing different outfits. <laughs> we'll see. Sounds like we'll you're, more, you're more made for the director role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. So, you, but you have been in a couple of other bands' music videos, right? Oh, yes. Many many music videos we have there's a great production company in Athens called Dominar Films and before they were really hot and heavy doing that um, they were just my friends so they would call on me to act in various music videos because I don't you know there, there wasn't I guess a lot of people to choose from so they would they would give me a call and say hey are you doing anything Sunday at 1 a.m I would say nothing Nothing much. Let's do it. But I, I acted a lot in Don Broco videos. They're like a, a UK, like heavy rock band. They're really cool. Um, right. But yeah, I did some of their videos. That's really cool. I, I listened to them a little bit like a few years ago. <laughs> I haven't thought about them in a while. <laughs> Thank you for reminding yeah. me of them. <laughs> yeah, really they're, cool. they're crazy. They're going on a American, like a U.S. tour, so maybe. Oh, oh my God! Open? There's a mouse there. I knew I saw some. There's a mouse in our studio. Did you see it? Oh my God! Yeah, saw, yeah. did I you saw see it? As well. oh Save it before God. someone else kills it. <laughs> my friend. Oh, it's like a rat. <laughs> oh, it's a rat. We've been having like just so many rats in our lives. We found a rat's nest in my car. Joey hates rats. How dare he? Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. That's fine. It's okay. fine. It's well, fine. Let's, we'll, finish the, we'll finish this up, and then we'll deal with that situation. <laughs> okay. Live <laughs> drama. <laughs> um, just wow. a couple quick things. Um, so the new album, are you going to release it DIY, or are you going to have a, a label for it? Um, we've been... Yeah, half and half. We've been running an ad campaign through a fabulous PR company called uh, Team Claremont. So they've been very helpful with getting us publications and just like sort of pitching us to the right magazines. As far as having a label, we won't have one for this project. Maybe the next one. Maybe someone will hear this and go, oh, we got to put Monsoon on a label. Perhaps. We will see. Maybe we'll be DIY. <laughs> So last question I'd like to ask everybody is like, who's a local band or artist in your um, area or that you want to, that you think needs more attention, you want to give a shout out to anything like that? Fishbug. Fishbug. Yeah, ditto. Fishbug is great. I love Fishbug. They're, they're friends, friends of ours, and they're making great music and they're working super, super hard. Oh, I was at their house this morning. We we're also we're also distracted by this rat. We saw the rat. It, it just made it, it made it, eye contact with us. Oh my god, he's typing. He oh says it knows. <laughs> okay. Oh so, wow. Thank y'all so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. It was thank great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice to meet you, James. Meeting you. Nice he's to meet Virgo. you. All. Oh yeah. Have a Bye. Great one. This episode was recorded on January 19th, 2022.